All right, we're looking at 2.3, linear, exponential, or neither. So when we talk about linear, that means it has a common difference. Or we might say it has a constant rate of change. The other option is that it's exponential, and for exponential, it would have a, a common ratio. Okay. All right, so, and if it doesn't have either, uh, if it doesn't have a common difference or a common ratio, then it would simply be neither. So let's go through and look at a couple of these. So the first one, we're looking at a graph and we have our line, which is from here to here. And because that line is straight, we know it's going to be linear. So we could say linear, and one of the reasons we could say it's linear is it has a straight line. We could also find the rate of change. So for example, if I was to go up a half, the rise would be 0.5, and then to the left, one and a half, that'd be negative 1.5. And so if we multiply that by two, we would get one over negative three. So we could say it has a common difference of minus one third. Okay, the next problem says it's a table of values and it's going from 64 to 32 to 16 to eight to four. So if we looked at linear, that'd be minus 32. And then 32, this would be minus 16. So we know that this is not linear because those are not the same. So then we can do working backwards. So if we did four over eight, that equals one half. Or if we did eight over 16, that equals one half. If we did 16 over 32, that equals one half. So it has a common ratio of one half. So we would say this is exponential and it has a common ratio of multiplying by negative one half, or sorry, not negative, just one half. Okay. All right, uh, number three. It just gives us an equation, y equals 4x. Now you might remember that y equals mx plus b, that slope-intercept form. And our slope, or rate of change, is simply 4. So this is linear. And you could say it has a constant rate of change. And it's 4 over 1. Okay. 4. This function is decreasing at a constant rate. Constant rate 
it doesn't matter about decreasing or increasing, but we know it's linear because it has a constant rate of change. It just said. So the reason is literally because it has a constant rate of change. On 5, we can tell it's not linear because that's not a straight line. We could check a few points to check for exponential. So if I did right here, this would be 0 over, looks about 1, and then 1 over, looks like 2, so it does not have a common ratio. So you could say the function is neither linear nor exponential because it doesn't have a constant rate of change or ratio. So it does not have a common difference. or a common ratio. And we're not going to go through them all together. Um, but what we have to basically look at is, does it does have a common difference or constant rate of change, or is it um, got a common ratio? And some of it's just going to be using your intuition. For example, six, a person's height as a function of a person's age from 0 to 100. So it might make sense to create a graph. So if you think about someone who's 0 years old and how high they might get, maybe they get 6 foot. Um, as they get to 100, in the beginning, they're growing maybe at a... and then they don't really grow at a certain point. Once people get to about 20 years old, they don't really grow anymore, mostly. So obviously this is going to be neither, because it's not straight, you're not exponential. All right.